All right, we'll continue on with unit 10 exercises. Um, unit 10 is the perfect active, relative pronouns and interrogative adjectives. And then we have the St. Michael prayer at the end that I added. So let's start our beginning prayer here. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicur erat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Okay, so we'll take up uh, where we left off. Translate into English. Any takers? And uh, I've got today, let me see, let me look. I write down the translation, then I have to try to make a sentence out of it. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> I've done that myself a few times. <laughs> today, the Lord God, who fared is above or over, I'm assuming it's like lifted up or lifted up over. Okay, so today the Lord God lifted his only begotten son, I guess, over all in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, yeah, that's a pretty good. Uh, Pretty good uh, translation. As in, superconctos is all, all, everybody. Above all. Above all. So, superconctos is above all. And um, meaning uh, he lifted, you know, he lifted up his son above. I, I, I hate to say everything, but yeah, even everything in heaven and on earth or everybody or. All I'm not sure all is quite captures the cunctos or sorry the cunctos long you. Um, I've been speaking English again. You catch me every now and then saying uh, uh, uh instead of uh or or ooh cunctos. Michael, yeah, I have a little request. Could we just for our own sake, uh, as we go through these exercises, identify the uh, the the, uh, the verb uh, that's in the perfect. Some of these verbs are not in the perfect, but those that right. are, then it might be helpful to say, okay, well, what is the third part of the verb that is first person singular? Um, so that it's just good to re remember what that is. So like an extuli, that would be extuli. Um... Oh, you mean the first person perfect? Well, that's what I'm saying. It, oh, okay. It, what we're all trying to do here, aren't we, is to <clears throat> is to start getting into the habit of remembering the third part of the verb, which is the. Oh, I see. You want you want the third part? Of, okay, okay. I, I misunderstood quite. But I sort of misunderstood what you were saying there. I thought you wanted the first, the first, per, the first. Um, the first part of the four parts of the verb. You want the third part. Yeah, because Got it. that's what we're doing here is we're working yeah. on that, that third part yeah. and then we're taking it to whatever the you know conjugation is for that. Yep. So in this case, we're talking third person singular. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it's good to identify what that first person singular is. Yeah, extuli from extolo. Right. Okay. Well, that one's going to be easy because there are none. <laughs> it's, all, it's all passive. Yeah. <laughs> Any takers for number 12? Through the perpetual mercy of God, the chains of sins are lifted and broken. Okay. Could, yeah. Could and you, you can also translate vincula as bonds or mm -hmm. bindings. 
you know, uh, vincula is um, restraining things <laughs> in, in a general sense. So you could, um, uh, so bonds, um, uh, Let's see here, I want to check something. Chains. Um, in fact, let me tell you what, let me, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add, let me add this to the, yeah, let's see here. I want to add this and I want to add that. There we go. Now you can see Scriba. There we go. So if you look up vinculum, uh, that with which anything is bound. So a band, bond, rope, chain, fetter, or sorry, cord, fetter. Catena uh, uh, is actually um, a little better. There we go. That is a, um, uh, a ch yeah, catena is usually specifically a chain here. So I'm just pointing this out. Uh, chain is fine. I think I would have used, I think I, I personally, he uses change. I would, I, uh, bonds. I like bonds, but whatever. It's, um, uh, Vincula is, uh, third, second, uh, declension neuter. Uh, Vincula, yes. Se uh, second declension neuter. Vinculum vincula. Okay. Or I should say vinculum vinculi. Sorry. Hey, Michael. Oh. Is vincula, yeah. Uh, translation ha have been taken away and abolished. Is that as accessible as lifted and broken? Yeah. Yeah, talunter could be taken away. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Tolo. Okay. Sorry. Now I understand what you're asking me. A little slow tonight. Tolo. Well, okay. I'll, I'll just go ahead and put in the form so you can see that it's tolo. Okay. Yeah, um, it means to lift up, to take, to raise, to elevate, but um, it also is to um, uh, you know the the anus day anus day qui tolus peccata mundi, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So let's see if I can find, oh, let me scroll down here, and to raise, lift up, elevate, to take on, assume, to take up a thing, uh, to carry off, there we go, to make away with it, you see. Can you see where my cursor is there? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the text does say, even though this doesn't, the de the text does give you takeaway as one of the definitions. Yeah, yeah, and but that again, makes sense because of the agnus agnus day. Yeah, yeah, that's it's the same verb, quitolit uh, or quitolus. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're doing the agnus day, then it's quitolus because you're addressing the Lamb of God. Right. Uh, um, but uh, Domine non sub, uh, let's see, wait a minute. Um, well, there's also a toilet version, but never mind. Anyway, uh, and solvantur um, can be dissolved, or destroyed, broken. broken. Um, keep in mind, uh, you know, I've said this once before, and I, I probably should, should, um, emphasize it again is when you're going between any two languages um, it is sometimes you will find words that the meaning overlaps like a hundred percent or let's say 99 percent but in a lot of words, that's not the case. They're, they're, they're not a perfect identical match. And a lot of that has to do not only with the language, but also the culture and the way they see things. 
And the Romans, um, the Greeks were the philosophers, the Romans were the engineers. <laughs> so um, they tended to be a very literal and concrete, um, the way they, they saw things. So sol ventur, uh, let me go ahead and drop this up. Uh, S-O-L-V-U-N-T-U-R. Let's see if I type that right. Solvo. Um, let's see here. To loosen, uh, to release, to unbind, to set free, to dissolve, to take apart. Uh, so the, the, um, we get, um, we get uh, solution from there. Uh, and we get... Oh. Pardon? Dissolve. Dissolve, yeah, same idea. All right. Qui discipuli vitam in Galea finiverunt. Which disciples ended their life or ended life in Galilee? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you. No, they said just he had life, life, one life. He did not have lives. We had that discussion before class started. Yeah, and actually, you know, we probably should take out the there. That would be much better, yeah. Yeah, that would be much better. Yeah, we, uh, we um, um, Teresa was arguing for a plural there because it was disciples and they each had a life, so that was lives. And I said, well... That's that's why I stopped saying there to say ended life. Yeah, yeah, ended, ended life. life. Yeah, in fact, I like that. I, I'm, I, I yeah, there we go. That's I'm going to keep that in my charts now forever and ever because <laughs> I like it better. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, and and see, this is in fact this touches upon. Um, uh, in fact, let's get rid of the have here for a moment. Yeah, that's, uh, there we go. This touches upon um, what I was kind of getting at is, you know, now it's one thing for when you're struggling with something to, uh, even if it comes out rather stilted in English, who cares? You are attempting to understand the, mm -hmm. the Latin. And if you need to do that through the prism of English in some cases, which is okay, then uh, you, know, you don't have to have beautiful prose. But if you're wanted to translate that for the great unwashed masses, then uh, you got to stand back and say, well, what is the Latin really trying to say here? And how would we say it in English? And that there right there is an excellent example. Anyway, postea Christiani detrimento petri afficie bantur. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got to do the fini verunt. <laughs> I'll let somebody else say it. <laughs> Finivi. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, that's what we're supposed to do. I was yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, I figured everybody's going, what is, what, we, what, what does he want here? <laughs> fini, yeah. Drop the errant off and you have a fini. -vi. I think but, wherever possible, it's just good uh, for us to say that first person. Yeah, and. Um, so that we can, we can, you know, start memorizing these things. Yeah, not a bad idea. Ah, I'm E-R-E, -E. wow. No, can't spell, yeah. Finio, finivi, to limit, bound, and closed, uh, end. Yeah, if we go through all the uh, set bounds, restrain, to put to an end, to finish, terminate. Um, that's why, by the way, I do re recommend that as you uh, do learn some of these new words, that it's always, a, especially verbs, okay? Nouns are fairly concrete, you know, they, they, they um, I mean, they, they do, they do have multiple meanings, but verbs are the ones that really have a lot of the meanings. So it can mean just to limit, bound, and close. Also, but to put to an end, to finish, to terminate. 
uh, to finish speaking, to draw to a close within limits. So there, there's a lot of meanings of that word in there. So it always, you know, it's, it's good to um, read your dictionary from time to time. Uh, anyway, postea Christi, oh, I said that, uh, detrimento patri efficie vantur. What disciple, oh, no, that was Adam. <laughs> Sorry, next question. Postea Christiani detrimento petri efficie bantur. Afterwards, Christians were affected by the loss of Peter. Okay. Or later on. Yeah. Um, or after that, um, there's a couple of postea. Um, uh, has a couple of different whoops help if I could put the T in there wouldn't it and that is a short uh postea there we go short short O uh after this hereafter thereafter afterwards etc or later on later on yeah I'm sure oh let, let's see it's, uh, it's got a I'm sure it said later on in there someplace that, you know that word we've talked about this before that afiche bantur yeah That's a strange word it almost suggests that you can't get what's going on uh, unless there's a sentence that follows this cuz just to say that they were affected <laughs> it, that 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 begs yeah. the question that begs the question how yeah it's such, it's such a strange word it is. Uh, let's see that. Oop, F -E -G, oop, lift out an eye. We do have to remember that these are exercises to get us to learn words and structure, not to create a model. well. Well, I mean, it's just some yeah, weird stuff. You know? But uh, on the other hand, um, okay, off ficio. It is from uh, ficio, which is facio, to make, to do. So it really just says to do something to someone or to influence someone. So in English, it's kind of an awkward word. Um, it, it's not so uh, it's like the loss of Peter did something to them. Yes, uh, and it is, of course, pass passives, which doesn't help it any. So really, afterwards, the Christians were affected, or, or later on, uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to use. Um, it's it's imperfect passive, right? Yeah, it's imperfect passive. So, um, so, or after that, <laughs> Christians were affected by the loss of Peter. So that that's a good, you know. Now we would probably throw in something a little else, like uh, badly affected or something like that so it, it um, almost suggests to me the stoicism of marcus aurelius <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they, they, they were feeling bad but they weren't going to show it yeah yeah so anyway benedictus qui venit ad chenum domini hosanna in excelsis now this one should not be hard sorry benedictus qui venit i said venit i changed it to the to the um, perfect when I said vein it. Short, shorty, ven it, ven it. Is it veni for the perfect form? Yes. Venio, short e for the present, but veni and, and vein it, it's, you know, veni, venus, vein it, et cetera, for the perfect. But we've sung veni, veni, Emmanuel so many times. <laughs> that I, I've um, I've been corrupted, and I tend to say venit when I really meant venit. So it's veni and venit. Yes. Okay. Present tense here because it's the short e. Right. The old uh, veni vidi vici is correct. correct. I came. I saw. I conquered. Right. I guess that's a perfect sent perfect phrase or yep. perfect sentence. Yeah, you said that perfectly. Yes, thank you. 
And in class, hey. Latin, that sounds so ridiculous for the English year. Well, hey, the classical Latin is weeny weedy weeky. I know. That's why it sounds, I mean, it just sounds so. That, sorry, I just can't weeny. imagine Caesar this, you know. Weeny weeny weeky by wimpy. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll, re I'll remember the by wimpy. I, I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, benedictus, qui venit ad genum domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, right, Hosanna in the highest. Now you see, that's the other cool thing, is see, in English, in um, Latin, that is gender neutral. So I really think the feminists should all adopt Latin. <laughs> well, and then you have homo, which which is the generic man. But, but that is but that is generic when you say blessed is he. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just being contentious. Is blessed is he or just blessed who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, it can be, okay, literally, blessed who? who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, you need a, in English, you need a something. You, you need a verb there, okay? So you should, in English, it is blessed is he who comes in the, to the supper of the Lord. Yeah. Sorry, chain of the meaning supper of the Lord, not name of the Lord. So. Um, yeah, the, the text does, in that inserts that uh, to be verb. Yeah. None that's there. Yeah. Or you can say he is blessed who comes to the supper of the Lord. You can put it anywhere you want. It, well, within reason in English in order to make it a complete sentence. If you remember, you know, Latin often drops the verb to be. Yeah. So. To be or not to be. To be or not to be, yes. <laughs> Um, you sank my battleship. <laughs> oh, I guess that would be B2, though, wouldn't it? it would be B2. Yeah, all right. Subito puerum imperium domini vidit, qui deo gratias agit. Oh, now we got all our perfect tense verbs here. Just uh, So this is where they use the conjunctive relative. Right. Uh, or connective relatives. So uh, connective, it, yeah, I, I know what you meant. Suddenly, the boy saw the dominion of the Lord and gave thanks to God. Yes. Dominion or power? Uh, it can either one. Imperium is a power. It is also um, empire. Empire. Uh, it can be command. Okay, let, let, this one. Okay, this is another one that has a bunch yeah, of different the, meanings. I thought that dominion makes sounds better when you're talking about the Lord rather than empire. Well, here we go. Supreme power, sovereignty, sway, dominion, empire. Yeah, I'm just saying when you're referring to the Lord, it just sounds strange to say empire. Uh, well, yeah, I, yeah, I would not. I would not use empire there. I would say either power. Or dominion. I mean, I don't. What we don't know is the context of. Correct. The, Correct. It, it, depending on the context, you, you would say one or the other. Yeah, and and what it may have been, if the you know, and this is my impression of the context is there was some sort of miracle. Right. And so I would go. Uh, I would go with power. Yeah. In this case, unless unless that the miracle was something like um, the transfiguration, the transfiguration. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, then I would go with dominion. Yep. Clarice. Oh, oh, we didn't do it. Sorry. So Clarice is right. I don't think there were any boys up there. Uh well, you know, the Apostle John. He yeah, was but maybe. There. Yeah, maybe we just weren't told that there was. He was young. 
<laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, anyway, uh, but anyway, so VD, okay. Video. Videre. Yeah, well, yeah, vide but notice that video is a short I. Video, a videre, VD. Yeah, so notice this is another one where the vowel in the perfect form goes long, just like venio, venire, uh, veni. Well, vi uh, video, videra, sorry, videra, long E, third, second um, conjugation, uh, vidit. And then the uh, participle. Don't you mean weed it? Uh, no, only if you're a wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> only if you're in a, a wimpy. <laughs> and then it wouldn't be weed it, it would be wit it. Yeah, it'd be a wit it, yeah. Clarus, <laughs> Ministerio Populi Sepi. Oh, we didn't do the agent, sorry. This is a strange one. Yeah, that's the agire. That's ago agire age agi. Agi. Yeah. Yep. That's not one that uh, would come to mind for agire. Uh, it is the wonderful third conjugation. So, so all bets are off. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, Claris, Ministerio Populi Sepe Adjuvatur. Cleric is often, or the clergy often are aided by the service of the people. Uh, it wouldn't be. How about helped? Helped. The clergy are often helped. Uh, I have aided or helped uh well by the ministry of the people yeah or by the service um well, well in this more, case but you could say ministry couldn't you um yeah you could but in this case i would go with service because uh the clergy are, we usually think of the yeah, clergy as I, ministers. I, so, I, you know, I get, it. I get it. But yeah, uh, uh, although on the other hand, you might say ministry of the laity. So, well, that's what I was thinking of, but yeah, maybe yeah. since you already have clergy. Yeah. So, primus discipulus petrum shivit, sed secundus non. First disciple. Knew Peter, but the second one didn't. Correct. The first disciple, Crimus Tushipulus, Shivit, knew, past tense, or, or has known, Petrum, Peter, but the second did not. So that would be Shivi? Yes, Shivi. Shio, uh, Shire, so this is a nice fourth declension, uh, sorry, fourth conjugation uh, verb, like, audi like audio. So she, uh, shio, shire, shivit. In firmi in domum intraverunt, qui a Jesus sanabantur. Right, the sick entered into the house and they were healed by Jesus. Yeah. All right. Per spatium multorum anorum, apostoli Jesu Christi in Galilea videbantur, qui enum in Jesum vere. Credit Ooh, how about that? We have a uh, imperfect passive and a uh, perfect. Um, 
Uh, okay, let me see, Adam. During the space of many years uh, of the apostle? <laughs> Close, Adam. During the space of many years, comma, the apostles, the apostles of, of Jesus Christ. There we go. Worse yeah. in Galilee. It was close, very close. No, no. Uh, so, and you can have in the space of many years, uh, through the, during the space of many years. There, there's a couple. Yeah, you can do through, during, um, maybe in, or over. That you could say either for or indeed. Yeah, over this. Yeah, many years. The comma. You should really should have a comma. The apostles were seen in Galilee, uh, for they truly believed in Jesus. I'm sorry. What was the one you were going to propose, Alex? You could say for or indeed. Uh, ooh, I like that. Yes. There. Yeah. Technically, the Latin does not have that in there. Oh, yes, it does. Enum. Well, yeah, enum can be four, but it, yeah, in this case, I think there's an intensifier there. So yeah, or indeed. Especially with the vere. I think that just propels the English a little stronger. So so we have um, uh, credidi, credidi, is that yes. it? Yes, credidi, credo. Credera, credidi. Uh, ooh, what's the fourth one? Cre, cre, creditus? Yeah, yeah, creditus. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, C R E D O. There we go. Credo, credidi, oh, creditum. Yeah, and the three there just shows that it's sometimes the dictionaries will just say three, two, one, and it's obvious. Oh, it's easy. So. Adam, I think you have a live mic, so don't say anything incriminating. <laughs> All right. On to the next one. Oh. Per potentiam domini Petrus populum peccatus absolvit. Through the power of the Lord, per potentiam Peter absolve the people from their sins. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Or by the power um, of the Lord. But absolve it is definitely a perfect. So absolve it. All right. Maria. I have a question on this. This one? Uh, no, the next one. Oh. Maria natum ante magistros vidit? Yeah. Or videt? Or okay. videt? So my question is, okay, so Mary Mary saw the child before the teachers, but uh, could that be translated? Mary saw her son? Because... Yes. Uh, I mean, it seems odd... Surely that's what we're talking about here. Yes, natu, natu or natus. Let me get the right one here. <laughs> I don't want to end up swimming. Uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Let's, I think this one is. Uh, oh yeah. Well, that too. Okay. Actually, just side total side. Um, Adam got that right. Yeah. Here we go. Nato, there we go. I'm going to mute you for a moment there, Adam. There. <laughs> Got a live mic. Uh, Nato, Natare Natavi Natum is to swim. <laughs> so, so there is a Natum. Where, are, are, meaning, are you just, are you just uh, contrasting the, that? The one who is, no, I'm just saying there, there's, there's similarities in the oh, okay. form. No, it is not the same one. Uh, we're we're going to go to natus, uh, which is this one, which is from born, okay, nascor. But um, when you use it as natus, it literally means the one, the male who has been born. Okay. 
well, no. that's a son. You know, I mean, I we don't. I don't think English has a. Well, I guess we have firstborn. I guess that's the closest we have. But um, no, it would be son. I have another question, Michael, on the interpretation of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, can that be spatial as well? Well, okay, let me. Mary saw her son before, uh, in front of the teachers. Now, is it before or in front of? Is there a difference there? Because if she saw her son before the teachers, oh, it, oh, oh, it, oh, it, it, it saw him, or in the presence of, in front of their physical being. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking that they should have used the word Koram. Yeah, you know That's what? what I'm thinking too. Koram would have worked. No, better. that is a very good. That is a very good um, observation. Observation. It may, can be in space. And let me find where the other one or of time. So, for example, we say AM, ante meridium. <laughs> so, yes, you're right. That can mean um, she went off to see those, uh, those teachers, but she saw her son before she went to see them. See, I, I, that, that's funny that that hit me, too. I was wondering what exactly... Are they saying here? Or well, maybe she saw her son before the teacher saw her son. Yeah, uh, the the sentences actually has a slight ambiguity. Um, you're you're right. Koram is. Um, well, that would make it clear. It would make it clear. There there would be no no. Yeah. But yeah, uh, ante can mean uh, either in geography. <laughs> position, space, if you wish. Uh, it can also mean in time. So it seems that the Romans knew about space-time. <laughs> what can mean geography of curiosity? Over there? Anyway, so, viri qui buscum Jesus transagros ambulabat fuerunt discipuli. Uh, let's see here. The man with whom Jesus came across the fields, <laughs> the disciples were. <laughs> uh, okay, that's that's close, Adam. Uh, it needs to be kind of polished up in the English a little bit. Yeah, Fran Francis has it right there. Is the man, deity, with whom Jesus, Jesus, uh, was walking across the fields, Ambulat, were fuerunt his disciples. And there we have the fui, the fui word. So. Yep, fui is our, is our uh, perfect. Yes, walk. fui is a perfect word. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you're in polite company, you can just say, ah, fui is a perfect word, and they'll look at you. And, of course, they may invite you to try on this nice, neat white coat with extra long sleeves. So maybe not, or maybe you shouldn't do that. Uh, et iterum intravit kafarla. Kafarnum. Yeah, kafarnum. There we go. And again, he entered Capernaum. Yes. And again, um, and for a second time, um, well, no, Eterum doesn't necessarily have to be second. So uh, it, is it intravi? Intravi, yes. Intra, oh, uh, yes, intravi. Uh, oh, actually, let me check something. Intravit. I want to I check something in the form. Yeah, okay. Yeah, intro, you can, yeah, intro, intravi, in, uh, intratum, int, intrare. So, uh, and of course there is. Uh, in classic, it would be in Twawi. Um, yeah, in Twawi. <laughs> Baby talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I tell you, it's interesting. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Well, maybe that's where that accent came from. <laughs> no, what's interesting is when I listen to the uh, classical Latin, when it is spoken fairly, uh, you know, at the same tempo as regular speech, you know, obviously, if you sl if you stretch it out, intrawi or intrawit, okay, you, you can hear it. But if you said reasonably quickly, editarum intrawit caparnum, you have to kind of really listen to whether it's a W sound or a V sound. And so I, I it doesn't generally bother me in uh, classical Latin. The one that throws me, though, is the A-E sound in classical Latin is an I sound. So instead of daughters, um, which we would say fili E, they say fili I. Wow. And, uh, that one just. That's a big difference. I, I have to really remember that one. The uh, A-E sound has an, has, is pronounced I? Yeah, long I sound. Okay. Uh, English long I. So that's the one that really throws me. The V, not so much. Anyway, Shio, quia Messias venit, qui dicitur Christus. And that, let me mark that. I did not mark that. I apologize. I know that the Messiah who is called the Christ is coming. Yes. No, it, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. I know the Messiah. No, it can't no. be. It's coming because it's came. Oh, um, I actually, no, I, that was a, well, let me check the book. I was thinking they had a short E there. Do they have a short E or a long E? 25. Oh, he doesn't have it. Oh, okay. I guess I'd have to look up John uh, 425. Is it a long eye or a short eye? Where are you talking? Here, vein it. Is it vein it or vein it? Well, you put, okay, you've put a short E, but in the homework, you, you didn't have the short E on that. Let's see. Well, I didn't have the long E either. Let me see. What did they put in the text? They didn't have, they didn't mark it. They didn't mark it at all. Yeah. All right. Well, we will solve this. Let, give me just a moment. Um, I will look up John 425. So give me just a minute here. All uh, right. So I need uh john 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 okay john four and let us find verse 25 let's see the context there okay i'm looking in the dewey rain english and it says the woman says to him i know that the messiah cometh who is called christ therefore when he is come he will tell us all things yeah and that is um not past tense. Dicit e mulier, shio quia messias venit, qui dicit tur Christus cum ergo venerit ile nobis annunciabit omnia. So that is all given in the present. Uh, sorry, there, there's there. Okay, the venerit will be the is the perfect future, which we haven't had yet. And then the annunciabit is, of course, the future, which we have had. So she's talking about in the future. So it is comes. Now, given the fact that I left the e off, the, uh, the um, short E off there, uh, in fact, it could either be comes or came, either one. It's either present tense or it's perfect. Yes. So coming would be possible, correct? Uh oh you have is coming. Um that would not be terribly literal, but it would not be incorrect. That would be the one that would be the meaning of the phrase. 
It, yeah, uh, the translation that I have is the Messiah cometh. So that would be is coming. Is, is coming. coming. Yeah. 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 So that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it's not exactly literal, but. Um, this is one of those strange situations where you, you have the spelling that is the same in the present as it is in the perfect. Yep. Except for the mark over the. Over yep. the you know, most of the others, it's pretty clear. Yep. Like vidit, vidit, yeah. as opposed to videt. Yeah. All right, what do we got here? Oh, all right, we're coming along here. All right, now the little harder one. Translate into Latin. Which Wait, life is good Vita? and blessed? I'm sorry, what? I was just going to say, is since it's Vita, is it Que Vita? Es bona et benita, benita, benedicta, uh, or beata, either one. Uh -huh. But I'm saying, is it quay? It is quay, yeah, quay vita. Because of the fact that it's yeah, vita and that is because awesome. you've got vita, and you go which, so quay vita, es bona et beata. Um, yeah, beata is um, actually beatus, beata, beatum. We're going to have another, um, uh, uh, what's the word I want? Um, uh, but, but it could be benedicta. It could be certainly benedicta. Beatus is from beo, which actually means to make happy. Um, I, I, they've trans some of the newer translations, um, especially in the Bible, has switched from blessed is so and so to happy is so and so. And I've gotten into some discussions with some, well, there, you've heard the phrase there's, there's rad trads, mad trads, and glad trads. Well, I've gotten into some discussion with some of the mad trads that, um, you know, that that was an impossible translation. And the answer is no, it is. I even showed them the dictionary and they still said, well, still incorrect. <laughs> uh, but Beo, Beo is to, um, which is what this comes from, is to make happy, to bless. Um, and so it's uh, happy, prosperous, blessed, fortunate. So you could even translate, uh, um, let's say we were going the other way, you could even say which life is good and fortunate. However, you're quite right. Uh, if you really want blessed, then you will go with Benedicta. Benedicta. Which, um, let's see, yeah, to bless, to praise, or adore. So either one works. Uh, let's see, the boy whom we saw is the child of the servant. So here we're talking about Quem. Correct. I was tempted to say puerum, but it's just puer, right? Puer, yes. One, one puer. Quem vidimus est natus servi? Yeah, puer, quem vidimus, the boy which uh, we saw. Uh, et, et est natus servi? Yeah, est natus servi is the child, the born one, or the son, your choice, of the uh, of the servant the text i know that lewis and short said natus's son but the text says son or child it could be either one so that's the reason why i thought natus would be the right word here yeah it could be either one but i'm saying here when you're saying child i don't know what other word you would use because... oh, oh oh i'm sorry i'm sorry uh let me let me think um um wow I'm at a loss. Well, all right, this is why we have the dictionary here. English, <laughs> a 
child, I'm probably going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So child noun. Lieber. Oh, good grief. How could I forget that one? Okay. Yeah. Now, again, Puella is female child almost, well, exclusively. Puer is male child exclusively. Yeah, but, but you can't say puer is puer. Yeah, but uh, li uh, liber is is child liber and libri is is um, is children. The one that you can easily confuse with a book. Well, I don't know that we've had liber, so not too. Oh yeah, we had liber, uh, uh, child. Um, oh okay. yeah, here, here we go. Here we go. Let's put in liber, l i b e o. Well, let's convert it to Latin. I'm pretty sure I showed you guys this. Because, way at the beginning, we were having fun with Liber. Yeah, see, Liber, Libera, Liberum, mm -hmm. uh, that acts according to his will and pressure, free, okay? But then there's a Liber II, which is children. Okay? Right. And then there is a Liber IV, which is the inner bark of a tree which is parchment, which mean, which is also the word for book. <laughs> so if you just have Liber standing there, you can have free, a child. Uh, it's also a name, so let, let's, let's forget that one. Or it can be a book. So a Liber, Liber could be a free child or a free book. You know, our text uh, dictionary has book and free, but it does not have child. Just think that's uh, interesting. I, that's kind of, yeah, I'll have to look that one up. I don't know why it doesn't, because uh, Liber, yeah, uh, I mean, is child. But generally, uh, yeah, anyway, so that that would be the other one that you would use. Therapy, is that a long I in the end? Uh, correct because it is the genitive. That's what I thought. Okay, making sure I wasn't. Therapy. No, that's okay. I, I, I tend to get a little lazy after a while. I get tired of putting them all in. So hard to find yourself these days. Uh, <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> what servants of the Lord are without blame? We mm -hmm. servi domini. Yep. Sine culpa sunt. Or just yeah, uh, put the sunt wherever you want it. <laughs> okay. Sine. Yeah. Sine culpa is without blame. Culpa sunt or sunt. sunt we, yes. We do this a lot where we put the verb at the end. Yeah, I, I think he likes to stick the verb in the in the middle. Okay. And, and by the, um, yeah, he, he, it's, yeah, he likes to put it in the middle. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That last part we shouldn't have any trouble with. <laughs> Eche es años dei. Uh huh. Eche es años dei. Yep. Now you got to do the rest. <laughs> we don't expect that Mundi. We. What's the first word? Is it hick or? No, some... etche, etche. Etche. Okay. Yeah. This, that's... Okay. When the priest turns around before communion, yep. 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 he says, etche, anus dei, qui tolit peccato mundi, uh, well, peccata mundi, sins. This has peccatum, or this has the sin, one sin, uh, of the world. And then we say, yeah. domine non sin dignus, et, 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 et cetera. So. Ecce takes on kind of an announcement type of a. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, I would be tempted to say peccata, but it can be. Peccata mundi. But they just say sin. So I thought I. It, it, Sin is like fish. It can be singular or plural. Yeah, uh, or well, it can. Yeah, and if if it would this if it was sins, then it's got to be peccata. 
anyway, because well, I'm going to put that's a, a second declension neuter. Yes. Right. So that's why it's picante. Yeah. Yeah. Ecce literally means behold, look, yo, dudes. <laughs> you know, in the in the vernacular, um, it is a. There we go. It's not an interjection. A, it's something else. It's an adverb. It's okay. Does the Bible say uh, sin? Are, are we in in, uh, in mass? Are we not saying it the way it's written in the Bible? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, what is that? John one twenty. Oh, good. I have John up. Okay, let me go find John one. Come on. All right. There you go, John 1, 29. Ah, it's got peccatum. Yeah, okay. Oh, in uh, the Mass? So in the Mass, we, we, we say it differently. Oh, that's a good question. Now we say gonna... peccatum undi. Yeah, I think we say peccatum undi in Mass. So we say sins, whereas in the Bible it's peccantum. Yeah. Well, it's all the same, right? It's I mean, pretty much the same. I mean, if, even if you look up. Oh. I mean, it, it clearly doesn't suggest one sin, obviously. Yeah. So it can be a single sin. It could also be the guilt and the punishment of sin. So, uh, in, in the generic, you know, sense. in the generic sense. So it's um, as in English, it's a bit. Um, what's the word I want? Squishy. That's that's not quite the right word, but it's the one I'm going to use at the moment. <laughs> um, it can either mean in specific uh, as a specific instance or in general. Is uh, did so? Uh, this is another example where um, the uh, the to be verb is omitted, but it's understood. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and by the way, that this is something I want. Uh, we really, I don't think we have a good, yeah, we don't have a good equivalent to Eche in English. I'll tell you, we, we have behold, which is a good translation. Uh, but behold is a verb. It's an imperative form verb. And so you would think you might say, behold, anyum dei. Look at the Lamb of God. You know, you're, you're saying um, uh, you might think it would need to be in the accusative or something, right? And the answer is no. Uh, Eche stands all by itself. Uh, and um, it, it, as an adverb. How would and, you say look, squirrel? What's the word for squirrel? Oh, uh, um, Oh, it actually it's it's close to squirrels. Uh, scurious, um, Q U I R R. Squirrel. Yeah, here it is. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, S C I U R U S. So let me copy that. I have to remember that. Eche, curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. There we go. Yeah, uh, let's see if I can. Is that a short you there? Shiuris. Yeah, Shiuris, a squirrel. Shiuri. So if you want Shiuri. Yeah. Or, oh, I'm sorry. Um, plural, nominative. Shiuri. Eche. Shiuri. Actually, actually, went singular. So it'd be Shiuri. Well, you want a squirrel or more yeah, than look, one? Yeah, look, look, a squirrel. You know, like look at the squirrel. Oh, a squirrel. All right, then it would be uh, she urus. She urus. Okay. 
Look, I'm going to put that one of my blogger friends now. Okay. <laughs> the disciple who helped the, oh, I actually, yeah, this, qui uh, servi doni fund, but I had this servant of the, I'm not sure what you're pasting in there, Adam. Anyway, the disciple who helped the people. That was earlier. Oh, his. Oh, I see. Sorry. The disciple who helped the people ended his ministry in Judea. Discipulus qui, qui populum adjuvit. Populum adjuvit, yeah. Ministerium in Judea. Uh, in could you could you say suum ministerium? Uh, in uh, su oh, his ministry. Yeah, that'll work. And but, this uh, is one of those cases where adjuvit or adjuvi does mean help. Mm hmm. You you know earlier you mentioned uh, it yeah could be aided, but since they use the word helped here, it seemed like ajuvi. So ajuvi is the perfect uh, form. Yep. Hold on, let me put something here in suum or aeus. You could either use suum or aeus in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, ajuvi. Um, now remember that J is not a J sound; it is an I sound. Adjuvit. All right. Yes. Uh, adjuvit. So yeah, adjuvo. Um, sorry, here. Let me get. Uh, uh, ooh. Now sometimes he uses the J, and some. Oh, yeah, he did in this case. Yeah, adjuvo, adjuvi, adjuvi, adju, adjutum. Yeah, adjuvi. And and you got to be. This is another fun one. Um, odd. Uh, it. Oh boy, that's a long a, a consonantal I right before a short U. So odd. You vo. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say, but notice that this is another one where the U the central vowel goes from long. Sorry, from short to long. So, um, so if you had, let, let's look at an analysis of the word, uh, in, indicative, perfect, oh, well, well, hold on, ad uvo, ad uvare, ad u, oh, that's why. Um, so anyway, where was I? Are, are you saying it's ad uvid or it not ad uvid? No, it's long O. It's long U here. Adjuvit. So we've got two perfect forms in this sentence. Yes. Adjuvit or adjuvi and then finivit or finivi. Uvi. Ended. Yeah. Finito, fini. Yeah, I mean. We see a fair number of these that have the VI. Yes. Typically the firsts and fourth um, conjugation usually have them. Not so much the um, the others, although some of them do. Some of them do. You know, the the second conjugation is is like the moneo, monui, etc. And then the fourth, con the third conjugation is all bets are off. <laughs> uh, in fact, they're usually not a vi. So if you see a v a v in there, it's usually first or fourth. If um, you know, unless the nice thing about when I have this electronic dictionary is it knows the parts. So, so adjuvo, see, it knows that is. Whoops, uh, sorry, I wanted the adju, adju. This this is uh, oh, this is a first conjugation. That's why adjuvas. Sorry, I was thinking something else. Never mind. Anyway. All right. 
so now um, we only have a few minutes. I'm going to go to the prayer of St. Michael just briefly. Uh, and this I'm going to kind of do to give you guys what a feeling for what I was looking for. Could I ask uh, you what, what, what exactly was the horrifying vision? Do you know? Um, my understanding and one of the difficulties in um, the church is we deal with the supernatural. And we also deal with the telephone effect. <laughs> Does everybody know what the telephone effect is that I'm referring to? Yeah. Yeah, the game telephone, we align people up. One person says something and that person, person's next to them and they repeat it. And then by the time you get to the end, you wonder, you know. <laughs> it's also known as a game called gossip. Yeah, gossip. Yeah, it's also called the mainstream media. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> too. Uh, all I, my understanding is uh, it was a vision of the 20th century. Oh, was, wasn't it where the devil and the Lord were asking, uh, the devil was saying, I can, ruin, I can destroy your church if you give me more time? And I honestly don't know. You're right. I had heard that, Teresa. Um, but that's why the historian in me, it's an often repeated story. Okay. The historian in me would like to see, you know, a handwritten letter by Pope Leo XIII saying that. Uh, or an announcement in the um, uh, the Vatican newspaper, whose name escapes me at the moment. Um, shoot! Oh well, doesn't matter. Uh, well, I hope, I hope the horrifying vision what didn't have anything to do with the current Vatican. <laughs> Actually, it kind of does. It does in a way. Yeah, yeah. From what I remember, if I'm remembering it correctly. <sighs> The Pope saw Satan having a discussion with. Uh, that is I the newspaper you were thinking of Los? Uh, is the one you were thinking of Los Servatore Romano? Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, Teresa, could you continue? Yeah, continue, yeah. please, Teresa. Though. Yeah, anyway, but they were. He saw Satan having a conversation with God, and and Satan was saying, "I can destroy your church. I just need more time, and and I think more people, or something." And uh, God said, how much time? And he said, 100 years. And God said, you got it. And so that is where there's a lot of discussion in some of the, the groups I'm in about when that 100 years started. Yeah, I want to I know when that 100 years start. I maintain we're way into overtime. <laughs> yeah, I think we are. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've heard the same story, too. But I haven't heard it from an authentic source, if you know what I mean, Teresa. Yeah. Um, and so the difficulty is, um, you know, we we deal with the supernatural here. So such things are possible. OK. And say, well, that can't happen. Um, and we also deal with the the telephone chain. And so, um, well, you see. Oh, well, OK. Good example. The mainstream media. A lot of them can't get it right. And, and even when they're trying to get it right. So um, I don't know, but yeah, I heard the same thing. And I want to know when that hundred years start. I want to know when the clock started because I, I, we're in overtime as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, he did have it. He did compose. Unless of course it hasn't started yet. Yeah, unless, yeah in which case we're really in trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, please don't. Yeah, let's hope that's not the case. Uh, but he did, he did compose it and it is released. Uh, you will see it noted in the Recolta. And um, I've forgotten where else. Um, and again, it was recommended by Pope John the Paul II, um, St. Peter's Square, 1994. And uh, whoops, that should be an ER in there. I'm sorry. Uh, ER. Uh, the prayer itself is new, but the Sancta Michele Archangeli Defende Nos in Prelio it's been around for many, many, many centuries. Uh, it's probably a thousand years old. I'm just off the top of my head. Um, 
I, I, I know I've seen it in the 12th century documents. I think I've seen it later than that. So um, that part, Sancta Michele Arcangeli Defendi Nosum Crelio is, is a is a antiphon used oh. in a lot of places. So what I had in mind, oh, did I, uh, oh, interesting. I duplicated the slide. Did I do that in the notes as well? Hmm. Yeah, you did. Oh, well, all right. So let's me delete that. Okay, power of um, of um, copy and paste. So, yeah, slide nine and slide ten are, are the same. the same. Okay, so let's let's do a little bit of this, and then we better wrap up. Uh, you can I what I'm trying to do here is give you a little template here. So you see Sancta. Well, what is that? That's vocative. What is it vocative for? Sanctus. And what does it mean? Saint. So Michael. Wouldn't that also be in the vocative? Technically, it is vocative because Sancta, you, you don't actually you don't necessarily know that because the form is Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, and it is a third declension noun, which again, you guys don't know that. Um, and it means Michael. Now, Archang Archangele, okay, well, that's got to be vocative too. Right. And that is a uh, Archangelus, Archangelus. And what does it mean? Of course, it means Archangel. So you get a few freebies here. Uh, Archangel, no, Archangel. You gotta walk, watch out. Uh, I do like to convert angels into into angles. It is defend and not to be confused with the Russian city, of course. Right. Defend a, the imperative. Yeah, but uh, let me come back to Michael. So, given that this is uh, the adjective and this is the noun, and they both refer to Michael, then you can safely say that is the vocative. Yes, this is an imperative. Okay. The present imperative. Defendo. Yeah. You don't have to fill out the whole thing, but it means to defend. Here, yeah. I think I, let me let me be let me be uh, consistent here with my colons and semicolons. There we go. So yeah. Imperative, uh, no, <laughs> imperative, right. So you have a better idea here of what I'm looking for? Now I do, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, nos. Um, See, this is where I was thinking when, when, it, when, you, when you got a, a pronoun or a noun, you want the case, so accusative us. here. Yeah, yeah. And we'll do one more. In. Well, that is a preposition. Preposition, right. There's nothing more you can say. Yeah, that's it. Now, you can say in. If you want to, you can say in plus accusative or dative. But we know we're going to peek here, and we know that Quelio is dative. And so you're going to say in something <laughs> okay then prelio uh prelium battle war etc and i don't think there now there may be i know there are words in here that you michael, haven't had but i don't think there's anything isn't, michael isn't it ablative uh oh good grief I clearly said ablative. I don't know why you're asking. Oh, okay. I guess I just misheard you. <laughs> you you misheard. You totally misheard it. Because <laughs> I put prelio. Uh, oh dear. Yeah, I can. Ablative. Yes, prelio. Yeah, yeah. It, it we uh, yes. In prelio, ablative. Francis is asking. We go back one slide. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. One slide to this one. Thank you. What's your question, Francis? 
or you just wanted to re reread it? Okay, yeah. And you can abbreviate this. You know, I, I uh, will abbreviate it there. Just, you don't have to be, um, really, well, I, this is more an exercise for you guys than anything else. Um, because I want to take some of the more common prayers and burrow down the Latin or into the Latin with the fond hope that you will be able to understand it better. Um, now, Sancta Michele Archangelae Defende Nos is pretty easy. I mean, you can read that almost straight off as English. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us. Yeah, the only one you got to think about is the nos versus us. Okay, so pretty easy. Um, this one is not too hard either. There are some tricky parts in here. Um, let's see, Insidia. Okay, esto is uh it's an imperative form of to be okay. so it means bx like be our protection yes esto quesidium or esto beatus be happy <laughs> yeah uh imperate is in the subjunctive we'll get to that it's it's not he commands but it's may is may he command so there there's as i said there's some trickiness in there but i believe well ely you haven't had so you uh but everything else you should be able to look up pretty uh oh that's third conjugation yeah okay but so the so subjunctive would be similar to like i'm um, uh may so and so long like may long may so and so rain would that yes. be part of these yes yeah 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 and we see it in mass uh when the priest says oremus with an e let us pray versus oramus which is we are praying And we'll get to the subjunctive eventually. Uh, now, the neat thing about the subjunctive is, well, I guess I'll mention it in here. Let's uh, put I am P E R E T. And I've been using, I've been intentionally using my electronic dictionary to see how to, to you know, to show you guys how to analyze stuff. Uh, you see, it is impero, it is a first conjugation impera in, see, impero imperare and what do we know about third person singular imperat i m p e r a t and that's the difference between the subjunctive and the indicative and that is that vowel that we're used to seeing shifts from an A to an E, or if it's an E, it shifts to an A. So the subjunctive is not that hard to recognize. Um, if you're writing in Latin, well, that's a little harder. But anyway, you can see that this is um, oh, subjunctive. But that's um, you know we you don't have to be yeah you know I, as I said you you guys haven't had that yet so don't don't be too concerned about it and that's why I put the may in there but anyway that's the idea and th what I'd like to see when we get all done is there's forty words uh, write it out okay the way that you have translated it and then we'll talk about it a bit. But we'll have to do that next time because it is past our time. Any last minute questions? Last minute questions going once, <laughs> going twice, gone. Okay. Um, as I said, next time we're going to do unit 11, the Plu Perfect. I don't think we're going to get to it. 
Okay. Uh, if you want to read ahead, great. Um, I had planned to go right to 13 or 14. Is it 14? A oh, uh, quick thing. Sure. We will not be here. next. I will not be here next week. Oh, okay. Well, then you won't have any fun going through the prayer of St. Michael. <laughs> no, thank you for letting me know, Adam. Um, um, I'm, 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 Michael, I missed what you were saying about uh, 13 and 14. Oh, I, if you recall last time, I said we were going to jump to the third conjugation. And after talking to Alex last time and a few other things, I decided, no, we're not going to jump. We're going to march straight through unit 11, 12, 13, etc. We're going to continue on. But I will throw prayers in for homework from time to time. Uh, there, and I, I warn you, the, these are not the prayers are not easy exercises. I want you to um, wrestle <laughs> with the Latin uh, using the tools you have and some of the techniques I've shown you. And if you absolutely positively must, you can also use Google Translate, although I warn you, uh, it may come out rather ridiculous. Uh, but I want you to kind of sweat a little bit with the Latin because I'm trying to get you out of your comfort zone of the material we've covered. Um, and so that as time goes on, you can handle things in the liturgy uh, you know, that we haven't specifically covered, you know, you'll look at that and say, well, I, you know, what does that mean? Uh, and give you the tools of, of looking it up, if you wish. Uh, if it helps you to think of you're a famous uh, uh, British spy decoding the, uh, what was it, uh, the Nazi, um, oh shoot, what was that thing? Uh, now I've forgotten all the, the terms of it. Or you can be the CIA. The what? Enigma machine. The Enigma machine. Thank you. Yes, there we go. The OSS, I think, was the name. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I, could I ask you uh, make a request? Sure. Uh, it it seems like to me, you know, those of us who love the Latin Mass, um, if if it if if there's a point where you can uh, just take some something out of the Latin Mass. Uh, part of the liturgy. Yeah, I plan and to. Um, that that would be really we, edifying. Yeah, we have a little bit of a well, and I've done that. I did that with the Sanctus. Right. I did that with the Agnus Dei. Um, we we haven't done it for the creed, the credo. Yeah, we haven't done it for the creed. Let's see. Can we do it with? Let me think here. Yeah, I've been a little hesitant to take too much from the liturgy yet because we have not had the third declension, and that's why I was thinking, oh, we'll jump to the third declension, and that way we'll get it, and it will make it better. What about the Gloria? Um, Gloria and Excelsis Dei. Well, omnibus, <laughs> third declension. Yeah. yeah, you really can't get very far without the third declension. Um, uh, By the way. But if you have a particular item in mind, and even if it has the third declension in it, I mean, to be to be honest, uh, this has, uh, where'd it go? Okay, perditionum is third declension. Okay. So as long as the, um, as long as it doesn't have too much stuff that you guys haven't had. I am perfectly willing to put it in here and give it a try. Do you have a particular part in no, mind or no. just any of them? No, but I have a related question. You know, you were talking about omnibus and uh, I'm trying to remember where else it was that peccatory boost. Yes. I wondered if there is any connection between that and the third person plural of the relative pronouns and interrogative adjectives in the dative and the ablative third person. I yep. mean, the dative and the ablative, excuse yeah. me, not third person, but the dative and ablative plural. Plurals, yeah. Is our quibus uh, for masculine, feminine, and neuter. Yep. And, and so that I was just, just curious whether there's a connection. Same ending. Same ending, yeah. If you recall, when I did the um, interrogative and um, relative pronouns, I said the first part looks a lot like the first and second declension. 
And the third part looks a lot like the third declension. Oh, I missed that, but yeah, okay. Yeah. I was curious. Actually, you you may were you? I missed one. Oh, you were here, yeah, you you were here last time. You you missed the time before, I think. It was. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yes, that is that is entirely true. It is the uh, the quibus, the the ibus, the ibuses, the ibuses. Uh, <laughs> uh are a third declension form okay the tricky part with i'll tell you the tricky part with the uh, oh well we're getting kind of late and out of but well now now that you got me started guys you can blame it all on um uh alex sorry, sorry. and he'll probably gratefully take it because he probably wants to hear what i'm going to say well curiosity has to be a part of this core. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. If you don't have any curiosity, you might as well go home. All right. Let me do this and let me do, okay. I'm going to change my screen sharing and I'll probably say, I sent this to the last class. I will send it to this class. One of these uh, last classes in last years. Okay. The first declension we've had so vita vitae vitae vitam vita etc and then the second declension we've had so amicus amici amico amicum amico amice uh in the plurals and you can see the us the i the o the um the o and the e and those are pretty much all through the second declension there are a little bit of tweakings like agar, we make it agri, agro, agrum instead of just agari. But hey, you know, uh, not a, no big deal. And then, of course, the nominum verbum. And the nice, the cool thing about the not the, um, I meant the neuter. <laughs> nice, cool thing about the neuter is the nominative is always the same as the accusative in both the singular and the plural. Right. So, um, and, and that works, and that works the same for the relative pronouns and yeah, interrogative adjectives. Yeah, that works all over the place. Uh, the third declension is a little trickier because there are a masculine form. Well, there, there's this is there's the non I stem nouns, and really these are just two examples of the same thing. Okay, that it, it's it just I wanted to, oh, that's the other thing. In the case of the first declension, they're virtually all feminine. In the case of the second declension, they're all either masculine or neuter. And then in the case of the third declension, they're anything. <laughs> they can be anything. That's why I did a masculine, feminine, and neuter form. There are also I stems, and then there are, sorry, non i stems and then there are also i stems such as panis panis and then um we also hit oh yeah that's that's where we need to be yeah so they're a little trickier they're not that bad um i'm, I'm kind of going through them at rapid speed here and uh, oh by the way yeah here we are here we are there's there's the ebuses <laughs> In the dative and in the ablative. Yeah, yeah, pan, yeah panibus, mortibus, caboribus, uh, matribus, and um, uh, regibus. So, yeah. But are, anyway. Are words that uh, end in ex like rex and lex, is lex also a third declension? Uh, yes. Lex, okay. legis, yeah. Okay. Rex, regis, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, as I was about to say, we will go on to unit 11. I don't think we're going to get to it next time. Uh, read up on it. I may or may not get the, the notes out. It is certainly, after we complete the prayer to St. Michael, it is what we're going to do next. Uh, the week after, and, and by the way, next week is, uh, what's the, is the 11th? No, today's the 14th. What am I saying? The 21st, we will meet. The following week, which is the 28th, I don't know now if we are going to meet or not. Uh, I am going out to the Cape that week. 
uh, for the Artemis 1. That's the rocket that's going to the moon, which will hopefully launch in early September. And we're doing a, a final closeout of, of all the paperwork and stuff. So we, we get to go out to KSC and pat the nice rocket and, and uh, put our stethoscope on it and make sure the, you know everything's all right. Uh, I fly back that Thursday. I don't know what my itinerary is at the moment. And so I don't know if I can make it. Um, so we may skip that week. Michael, that's okay, that'll give you an extra time to read unit 11. If, yeah, I can't make it that day. It's my wife's birthday and oh. I'd, I'd be in serious trouble <laughs> if, I, if I wasn't taking her to dinner. Uh, so. Can you at least maybe make it an Italian restaurant? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try saying some Latin at the Italian <laughs> restaurant, see if they get me. <laughs> uh, in, and this is in the U.S.? Uh, you could probably say Italian in the Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, but I will I will let everybody know, you know, in email. We will meet next week, barring some other disaster, to continue this on, probably skipping the last week in July, and then we will pick up again in August. But enough. Let us finish up here because uh, we are into overtime. So I will, I will mute everybody's, whoop, where'd it go? There it is. I will mute everybody's uh, microphone and we will say the closing prayer. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat renium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. So we are done. I'll stay for maybe a minute or two to answer last minute questions, but otherwise.